Good morning, students. Let's start the first chapter, Organic Chemistry: Some Basic Principles and Techniques. So we have already done the introduction part. Next topic is tetravalency of carbon. Shape of the organic compounds. As you have already read, that carbon is a very versatile element, and why it is called versatile element is that it forms a lot of chemical compounds, and the reason for that is two. First is catenation property, and the second is tetravalency. What is catenation? Is it is the ability of the carbon atoms to form long self-linking carbon chains, and the second is tetravalency. Tetravalency means it can form four bonds, and the how we can explain the tetravalency of carbon we are going to see today. Like first of all, let's see the electronic configuration of the carbon. As we know that atomic number of carbon is six, so its electronic configuration is one s two, two s two, and two p two. As you can see that there are two unpaired electrons. So according to valence bond theory, it should form only two bonds because in valence bond theory there is pairing of unpaired electrons but actually it is found that carbon form four bond so how it is forming four four bond we will see what happens is like this 2s electron will excite to this 2p cell and after that there will be four unpaired electrons that will come in the next slide we will go through the some of the basics of the orbitals like s orbital and p orbitals which you have already done in chemical bonding s orbital is it is spherical in nature then the p orbitals they are double dumbbell and according to the orientation of the double dumbbell there are three type of p orbitals px oriented towards x axis py towards y axis and pz towards z axis now as i was talking about like in the ground state there are only two unpaired electrons now this 2s electron will excite and it will go to the 2p orbital so now we are having four unpaired electrons in excited state so it can easily form four bonds in methane there are four bond with the hydrogen atom so here the energy of 2s and 2p it is different so the four ch bond should be of different length one bond should be of another length and the next three bond should be of some different length but practically all the four bonds are similar that means there should be similarity in the energy of this orbital so another concept of hybridization is proposed what will happen is this 2s orbital and all these three 2p orbital they will mix up and they will form four hybridized orbital and it will be called sp3 orbital so 1s and 3p will hybridize to form four sp3 hybridized orbital and since all these four orbitals will have same energy so the bond length of the ch bond will be similar and this explains this phenomena next when there will be hybridization between 1s orbital and only two p orbital will hybridize and one will be left unhybridized then 1s and 2p it will form three hybridized orbitals and it will be called sp2 hybridized orbital and one will be left alone now the hybridized orbitals they can form sigma bond so there are three hybridized orbital so one cc sigma bond and another two sigma bond with the hydrogen atom and the lone unhybridized orbital that will form pi bond so please note here hybridized orbital can form only sigma bond and the pi bond will be formed by 
unhybridized orbital so what's the difference between sigma bond and the pi bond whenever there will be a head on overlap of the orbitals either ss orbital and they will overlap head on then a sigma bond will be formed or when a s orbital and a p orbital they will overlap head on then there will be a sigma bond whereas when the overlap is side wise like p overlap is side wise then a pi bond will be formed as in case of c2h4 ethene next when 1s and 1p will hybridize to form 2sp hybridized orbital and 2p orbitals will be left unhybridized so there will be two sigma bond and two pi bond as in case of ethene one cc carbon will form a sigma bond then one ch will form sigma bond and there will be two pi bonds one is this another one is here so now let's come to the in case of sp3 hybridized what will we see the shape will be a regular tetrahedron and the bond angle will be around 108 degrees then in case of sp2 hybridized it will be trigonal planar and the bond angle will be 120 degrees then in case of sp hybridized the bond angle will be 180 degrees okay thank you